I'm so nervous. <laughs> we already lost the tire. Tire it, down. Wake up, new morning. Cold air fills my lungs. The sun begins to rise. You rub your tired eyes. Wake up. Oh, oh Stuart is dragging. Oh, 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 oh look at this. Already like making a scene. And we're hoping that they're not going to punch a hole in it and I'm say denied. Terrified. Because game over at that point. It'll be okay. Aww. Oh. <laughs> that looks really tight. Refresh with every breath onward. We go. It's clunking. <laughs> no. Oh, we got pulled over today, too. What's up, fellow journeyers? We are leaving this morning in the Walmart parking lot, heading about 10 minutes down the road, and we are hopefully gonna cross into Mexico today. And I know this is a Canadian couple over here. They're crossing into Mexico. It's Bluebird bus. I bet they're crossing into Mexico. From what we understand, a lot of people stop here before they go. What's for breakfast, guys? Donuts. What's, donuts for breakfast? Is that good, Hensley? No donuts in Mexico. Better eat it slowly. Look at her face. <laughs> I don't know if that's actually oh. true or not. I don't know what donut in Mexican is, but... Donoto. Yeah, I know everything. We discussed, we have, you know, people are ex-military, and nurses, and mechanic, and I'm our translator, so... <laughs> it's bad. What? I gotta do something. I'm gonna figure out what my role is. Your moral support. <laughs> moral support. Can you speak Spanish? C. Si. Alright, so we're at the same level. Alright, cool. C. Si. Un poto... Mexican... Mex... 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 Spanol. <laughs> <laughs> to the point, I don't know if you're right or wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe me and Stuart are on the same level. We're trying to get over to the border as early as we can. It opens at 6 because we do not want to be waiting in that really long line. <laughs> Everything we've read in our group is like, get there early, get there early, get there early. Yeah. So what's our last piece of mail we got here? Matt's, uh... <laughs> Thank you, Matt. I think Matt sent us some too. It's back in Tennessee though, but nice. See how that works. Everybody took out their code names for the walkie-talkie. Each individual. So Audrey, if you're talking, you have to have a code name. Team the whole, the whole, your whole RV needs a code name too. But you need Magenta Hot Spring. Magenta Hot Spring is your code name. <laughs> no. Wow, buddy. Donut ear. T Magenta Fox. Cheat. T. T. T Magenta. My goodness. Okay. For Tennessee. Oh, okay. Maybe the code names were a bad idea. It's kind of a strange feeling knowing that people are gonna be coming in your house and kind of looking around and this is like embarrassing for me to say. I even clean my house before I leave in case someone happens to break in. I'm always like, I would be so embarrassed if someone saw this. And I'm not like a super neat freak as Nathan has um, gladly told. Uh, we're less junk, not no junk. I do like my stuff. Please tell me I'm not alone on this one. You can comment below figuring out final logistics here travis who's coming up he's got the biggest rig with the 35 foot fifth wheel so he's gonna be the leader. he's gonna be in the front and i think we're going by size it's them and then Stuart Lindsay, and the airstream and then we're third and then kevin and alicia who built out a van in like three days somehow in prison <laughs> like... they they came to the team journey huddle we were sitting around a campfire we were all talking about how we had we're getting plans to go to baja and we're like y'all should come Literally, they like went home the next week, like bought a van, built it out, and th that huddle was in November, and this is January, the beginning of January. That's crazy that they built it out that fast with like littles, a newborn. They made it happen. Yeah. Nervous. Um, I didn't sleep that last night. I slept like a log. Yeah, Maybe you I did. should be way more nervous than I am. I don't know why. But I've read a lot. Like I'm done all the research, so like sometimes yeah, I don't know what I don't. Sometimes know. ignorance is bliss. I think it's, it's going to be fine. <laughs> there just can be frustrating things that can happen at the borders. So we're hoping that doesn't happen today, and we got all our everything in a row here, ready to go. So we'll see. Here we go. Oh, somebody lost the tower already. Is that our Travis, tower? Is that our you tower? You guys lost your spare tire. <laughs> we got it. <laughs> we already lost the tire. Tire it, down. Hey, it, it could be in worse spots. Oh, oh, Stuart is dragging. 
Oh, 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 oh look at this. There's going to be a tight squeeze up here. Oh, look at the smoke coming off the road. Y'all almost ripped off the back of here. Stewart has your tire. <laughs> we got it. We're good. Jeez. <laughs> oh, my goodness. They're taking pictures. Yeah, they're taking pictures. They should be. Already, like, making a scene. We already stopped in the middle of the road. <laughs> Lost a tire. What was that? That's one of our kids just hit the wall or something. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It's <laughs> What's he banging? Oh, he's putting the tire on. He's putting the tire on, yeah. His tire fell off, didn't it? You remember that time we were at the border at Canada and Corey from Finding Our Someday ran out of fuel? He's frugal. He did not want to pay for fuel in Canada. And so he's just like, He's, you know, he's sitting on empty, the lights on, turned off the engine at the border to save fuel. Well, that thing wouldn't crank back up because it had no fuel. Even if you pour fuel into the GMC, you have to prime it. So here he is, he has to go, he has to unroll the back of the truck, he has to get the fuel tank out. So he's walking around. <sighs> so nervous my adrenaline is going this morning wow i'm not gonna lie i'm a little nervous i'm a little nervous i'm just ready to get through this border so with the gmc you can't just pour fuel in and start back up so corey has to get in the back of the truck unroll the roll top get the spare fuel out, pour it into the tank. So he's walking around. I mean, we're like maybe, we're sitting like 50 feet before the border patrol. I mean, everybody's, we're right there. There's two cars in front of us at the time. And so they're all out watching it first. Then he gets out of the truck and you see him kind of reach and have their hands right here the whole time. So then, and then a couple more start. Well, by the time he gets done doing all this, so this is like a 10, 15 minute ordeal because he has to pour the fuel, he has to put the fuel back, he has to pop the hood on the truck. He has to start finding the button, you know, start priming the fuel into it. And they're all just like slowly coming out more and more. Just And then finally he gets, and I asked Marissa, I was like, should I go out and help him? She's like, no, don't go help him. Yeah, they're <laughs> drawing their guns. Like, <laughs> you're, stay, you're staying in your vehicle. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so, and he finally got it going and got through and Corey's really good at smoothing stuff over. He joked, I thought he's gonna get detained for sure for doing all that mess. They actually saw his, his Navy tag on yeah, his truck. Yeah, they're saying I gotta back up and go through line one. Line one. Okay, where's line one? All the way over there. Oh my goodness. Okay, here we go. All right, we're back in. Uh, okay. Okay, so so far we've lost a spare tire. We've apparently gone to Looks the wrong like lane. Looks like he's telling us where to go. Okay, uh, so this is mass. Fine, just listen to them. We do not know what lanes we're supposed to be going in. I guess they're spreading this out. We plan on following each other in. I can't see him, man. Can you see what he's saying? So we are pulling over to the side. I think we're all getting searched is my guess. Yeah, they're gonna oh. search all of our vehicles. <laughs> well, we're in RVs, I don't blame them. So <laughs> it's what it is. I told Nathan to take off his hat and glasses. We've read to cross borders. You definitely want to just take off all hats, all glasses. We're getting out of course passports. Uh, we also have proof of insurance, Mexican insurance, not just insurance in the United States. We have Geico in the US. Okay, quick fun backstory to the passports. It's actually embarrassing to tell you this. It actually started about three weeks before this in Tucson, Arizona. Okay, bud. So nervous. I'll be okay, Mom. Oh, you just wait. So three weeks ago, we legit did not know if we would even get to go to Mexico because <laughs> I have my passport. Marissa said her passport. JJ says his passport. But somehow, in the math, we forgot Hensley's passport would expire while in Mexico. So basically, the whole thing could be off. At least we caught it. We did catch it at least. That would. Been... I wish we would have caught it in oh, advance. No we can go to one of only like I don't know six to 10 facilities in the United States where you can get a passport printed on the spot. But the riskiest part is, and we're hoping that I'm they're not terrified. gonna punch a hole in it and I'm say terrified. denied. I'm <laughs> because game over at that point. So at this point, we just finished the interview process, which took about an hour. And then you have to wait like a required two hours for them to go over everything, look at the paperwork. And so now it's the moment of truth. It's been two hours and Marissa has to go back inside and see whether or not there's a hole in Hensley's passport. Mexico isn't gonna happen. Or we get this passport that's sped up for us so that we can go to Mexico like we had planned. Passport! We got it! <laughs> oh, wow. Oh. <laughs> 
So it worked. We got Hensley's passport with less than two weeks to cross the border on a same day print in Tucson, Arizona. All right, all right. <laughs> Back to the episode. If you have a, a slides, just tell them you can get all your slides out, but it takes a lot of time. Um, you have to get level, you have to set it up, you have to slide out. And a lot of times it, you know, keeps them from wanting to go in and search your rig because it takes so long. I think Travis is done. So that was really fast. Are they making? They're definitely walking. They're doing the run around with Stuart, which he's got, got the top on his vehicle. It's Stuart's in a, Kevin Elise's looks like tough, tough setups. They are tough. We're a little. <laughs> like, oh, that's a Viva. You can go on. Two of our four are searched and cleared. I think we're gonna be last. We probably look the sketchiest, Nathan. I debated hiding a magazine in Stewart's RV. But Stop, that's not even that's funny. Not, you don't do that. Humor. <laughs> so obviously we, we have nothing to hide. We have nothing in here for them to find, but it's just a nerve wracking process. Yes. Uh, <laughs> we're trying. And registration, yes, Where's registration's in there. There you go, we're in. That was simple. <laughs> He's super nice. All right, we're gonna go get our tourism card. Where? In this office. But that was kind of the nerve wracking part. <laughs> Where like, other, like some previous owner like shoved something somewhere I didn't know about or. <laughs> well, but... that happened. Kevin and Alicia said they found things like shells in their van that. Just that, now? Yesterday. Oh. And because they b just bought the van so recently. So if you buy something yeah. used, you really want to go through it before you come to the border. <laughs> we made it to Baja. You excited about Mexico? Uh-huh. You gotta go see. See. You excited, JJ? Yeah. Yeah. I love his yeah. I read a lot of things about not taking a lot of cash over the border crossing with you and then to go ahead and convert once you get over the border. But <laughs> I'm so glad we did have enough cash because you have to pay cash for that tourism card. And the tourism card for our family of four cost $148 and you had to pay in cash. And all of our group had to pay in cash. Phone plan with a major carrier. They're going to like swap over and it's you know double check. But for us, it's been fine. I get talk, text, and data is included in your domestic plan. You'll have no additional charges while I'm roaming. You'll get two gigs of high speed data, then enjoy a limited three gigs. A lot of your hotspot plans, ours included, our ATT when we have in our Verizon, those do not work in Mexico. So if you try to take them into another country, a lot of times what they'll do, what happened to us in Canada, I used that thing, I don't know, like less than a minute. I got over the border and I go, oh man, my hotspot's on. Too late. Like it already pinged me. You know, it was like 60 bucks or something for like just one kilobyte or one megabyte that it pulled down. Just the fact that it pulled any data in another country, they instantly charged me this international rate that was astronomical. So this is the border we crossed at the Mexicali border. You can see once you come in, there's a Costco if you want to stock up or you can stop at, stock up at that Walmart or that we boondocked at right before the border. There are a lot of different borders you can cross. Um, that was one of the ones we had read. That was one of the easier, best ones. To what, made it best? Like what made it best? Height. I've read that our friends crossed over at a different one. They were in a large uh, fifth wheel and the guard waved them through and it took their AC off. Experience the wonder, experience new life. A world full of color stretches the sky if we wake up our hearts and see it all. Discover it all. Alright guys, it's the same deal. Everybody stay Stay calm, stay good. They said there would be a few of these that we encounter. I knew one was about an hour south of the border. Well, here we are. So the military checkpoint, even though it's just like a little intimidating, it was pretty similar. They walked in, they took a quick look, asked us a couple questions, and then we were on our way again. Have any firearms, tobacco, drugs. Drugs. They I haven't said cared no, but the guy at the airstream behind me does. <laughs> You're gonna get them in so much trouble.
Greg. You can get 40 feet down here. But there's more planning. You're a little more limited where you go. I mean, just like the US. So I, I felt like it just would relieve a lot of the stress and open up more places for us to stay by having an RV this size. And so right now we're checking. There's spots over here on the water but I don't think any of those spots accommodate big rigs. We're hoping we can get maybe some of these small ones in there. So it's not just about can you get somewhere, it's like where can you park within that park? And what are the logistics of getting a level and getting the slides out? I mean, Travis and them, they're gonna figure this out, but it's an extra layer of stress. So they worked it out where we're sharing a site on the ocean here with Kevin and Alicia, because both vans can fit apparently but we have to alternate who has hookups and who doesn't. So I think we're going first, which means we don't have hookups. But this is looking pretty cool. I think this is gonna be worth it. That looks, that looks really tight. Oh my goodness. Am I going through there? We're at the beach now. At the beach? All right. This it's is gonna be, beach. this is tight. <laughs> what do you think, girl? No, it feels so good to like finally be here after months of planning. I'm even go gonna go out on a limb and say years of planning because it's the third time we've planned Baja. And every time we've planned it, something has come up like bringing JJ into the world, the world shutting down, and now we're finally here. Ah, we made it! <laughs> All right, about to do our first shot with a we haven't used the Instant Pot yet. This is actually, I bought the rig so I could do this. <laughs> BB-8 version of the Instant Pot, three quarts. <laughs> uh, Nathan's like, can I get this? I'm like, whatever makes you happy, dude. It's gonna be a continual thing where I'm kind of testing out the electric on this. I mean, the whole rig is powered by this EcoFlow Delta II. And it should hold, I mean, the Instant Pot's around a thousand watts, something like that, so it should be fine. Discover showing up on camera the way it's showing up on my eyes right now literally the water mm. is pink and the no it looks pretty crazy on and camera like too the sky's like blue behind the pink water with these mountains and pink in the sky and i don't know you got the rowing team the rowers <laughs> holy cow i don't think i've ever seen anything like this wow look at jj <laughs> what's in his hair something in his hair a hat Oh, his hat's on. Is it, is it backwards? Yeah, he turned it backwards. So we had to make a, a couple quick stops. First stop to exchange money. Little tip, don't try to do that on your credit card. You need a debit card. And unfortunately, our debit card, we found out, was expired like the day before we left. So we had to come in with no no debit card and that was a no-go so now we're having to like use our friends as an ATM and pay them back so that could get interesting and then the second stop hitting up the grocery store all right I have no idea what these prices mean do you know one peso is five cents American. one peso is five cents Man, I'm gonna so have to be doing app. my math in my head. There's this is, I, I tell Hensley math is important all the time and now I'm putting it to the test. Currency conversion app, this is a free app. The plantains here are 33.90 a kilogram. So that's $1.79 American. Okay, gotta put your thinking cap on. Maybe that will make my grocery bill go down because I have to think more instead of just like throwing it in the cart. <laughs> yeah, because if you have like dietary restrictions, do you have an app for that too? I'm doing the transcript. 
Oh no. Was it me? <laughs> Check out this egg. It still <laughs> has the feather. It's clucking. <laughs> now, I don't think it gets any more fresh. I love it. That is awesome. <laughs> I don't even think, I think it's trying to hatch. Oh it's like we would just leave it out. <laughs> is she sleeping? Is that Google Translate or? So it changes it to English for you? Wow, that's cool. So you can see what's in your food. Yeah. You were taking a photo. You were set up. Yeah, she was set up. Were you the coffee bandit too? No. <laughs> how much? Like, how much was this? So I did my like conversion app and I think I spent like around $45 on this. I have to show you something. Look at this. Oh my goodness. Is <laughs> it still got the hair on it? Yeah. Wait, is it inside of it? I don't know. Oh that's, my goodness. That's authentic right there. But eggs are way cheaper here than they are I at bet home. they are. <laughs> It's like a dollar. Crossing the border into Mexico with an RV can be very stressful. So honestly, we have spent the last few days in San Felipe at this campsite just detoxing and relaxing at the beach. And just engaging with the locals has been a lot of fun. Everything from like watching powered parachutes going overhead where I'm pretty sure he's just promoting his business and pointing to it. To like a rowing team that comes out almost every day with this just magnificent backdrop for a place to, to row. Like I've never considered being on a rowing team, but here maybe I would. To like six by six vehicles on the beach, horseback riders on the beach. Obviously we have the beach with the kids, just they're playing in the sand and they're engaging, they're flying kites. But here's the thing with Mexico, and I think this is gonna be a reoccurring theme. When you RV down here, it's so easy to become engulfed in it and just almost like mesmerized by the beauty around you. It's easy to forget that, oh yeah, we're RVing in Mexico. Oh, we got pulled over today too. I stayed here with the kids and apparently they went down a one-way road enough so that a cop pulled them over apparently. Well, yes, and in our defense, it was a one-way, but there wasn't a sign and the GPS told us to go down that way, but luckily the cop was super nice, all was good. We turned around, we made it to the store, and all in all, it was a really great day. So cannot wait to show you Baja. I know you probably have a lot of questions. What is it like? In this thing, when it comes to safety, how does that work? What does it look like when you're caravanning? It's going to be great. We have some amazing <laughs> stuff planned. Well, that is our journey for today. Until next video, we'll catch you guys later.